Okay, <clears throat> here we go. I uh, just picked this up. Uh, it was out on Buy Nothing, and actually the, uh, the owner was giving away the liner and the, um, the lid because the crock pot died. And, which is, it's a nice liner and a nice lid. Uh, that's cool. And, but the crock pot died, so I'm going to set the liner <coughs> lid aside. <coughs> And just take a look at the crock pot. So, uh, crock pot, the original slow cooker. It does have a model number. It's SCCPVLF605B. Okay. And I don't see a year on it right at the moment, but it looks pretty First good. First thing I want to do is I'm just going to plug it in real quick and see if it's using any electricity so any at all if it comes on or uses any electricity at all so well, so far it's not using any electricity at all and I see no lights the panels dead Everything's dead about this, so um, kind of starting at the beginning. Then just kind of look at the cord, and I'm just looking because this I mean, the tag is still on it, it doesn't look like it's been bent a bunch. And so, I'm gonna, I may regret this later, but for right now, I'm gonna assume that the, the cord is not the problem. So, um, Matter of fact, I'm going to think that the problem is in there. Now, interesting. I wonder if we've had this open before. Because these are not normally hand loose, but they are loose. We've got a washer and a lock nut on each side. And this is the pan. So, so I hear something rattling around in there. That's not good. Let's see if I figure out what it is. Ah, okay. So there's a spacer of some sort. Probably sits on that shaft and a washer. There's probably one on the other side as well. It just hasn't come off because of the insulation. Okay. So uh, there's not a lot to this thing. We've got a, the electric comes in. It comes in through the back, through the strain relief. Uh, and a couple of connections here that line up to some wires that run into this box. I haven't looked inside the box yet. I will. Uh, but first, I want to just kind of follow what happens here. So, actually, that box, the power goes into that box, but then it comes out of that foil covered box and goes to the control panel. So you can see where the Wires exit the box, these thin wires exit the box at probably low voltage and they go into the into the control panel. And then some bigger wires come out and some bigger wires come out of that foil covered box and they attach to the heating element here which seems to wrap all the way around the slow cooker. So that would be a big resistive element of some sort. Uh, not big, but a resistive element of some sort. And then there's a couple of white wires here. And, okay. and those white wires just looks like they come up and circle through under the, uh, under the pot here. Just kind of sit at the bottom of the pot. 
And I'm going to look at the, that first uh, because I'm interested in it. I want to know if there's something inside of it. Uh, so I'm going to snip this. work is done by not taking anything apart. Okay. And so inside of there is this. And I'm not sure what it is. Diode? I was hoping that that was a thermal fuse, but it doesn't appear that it is. does conduct or, or I'm getting feedback from the circuit. Alright, what else do we have here? Let's look for other places. I'm, I'm still holding out for the possibility, since this is completely powered off, that this issue is a thermal fuse related. Um, I'm trying not to move or totally disassemble this thing if I can if I can avoid it. But the next thing I want to look at and again I'm hunting for fuses because the symptom no power at all and it says that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up these bundles down here because that's the kind of material that they hide fuses in. Now granted we're also looking at inside of a crock pot so they would use heat resistant material. <laughs> um, so maybe a false false flag but we'll find out as I kind of dig a little deeper here. Oh, it came off and it came right off the end there didn't it? So the connection came undone. All right. <clears throat> So this was just stuck up in here, and this is just heat shrink. And this was just a simple electrical connection, and it was just protected by all that heat shield because it's inside of some place that gets hot and stays hot for a long period of time. So, mm -hmm. there we go. All right, so that's just a, a connector. All right. So, the regime is take a connector, cover it with some heat shrink, and then cover it with heat resistant tubing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open this. See what's in it. So this would be that foil covered. I'm taking box. this board out yet, but if I had to guess, I'd say that we've got um, power in. Power comes into the board. There's a full bridge rectifier under here somewhere that creates the low voltage to go out to the control through this jumper here, and then these two. I'm sorry, this and this are what go out to the uh, um, power, the resistive element that's going around the outside of the. The heating compartment, and this is that sensor or diode or whatever it was that we were looking at. That, uh, so I'm going to pull that board out and just have a look, see, 
Uh, I'll hook that back up for the moment. And just get it ready here. Give everything a little pull, tug to make sure it's in there. It is. Um, we'll put some heat shrink on there and throw the heat shield back over it before we reassemble it. But the reason that I did that was because we'll plug it in and just make sure, remember we assumed that the cord was okay and all that. We're far enough into this now where we should probably just make sure that uh, we've got power to the board. Nice and clear the cover is on that. See how brown and discolored the color is on that? And that's, there's no reason for that to be um, other than a connection heating up differently than it did over here. I'm going to unplug that now since I seem to be poking around in it. And we'll take this board out and just have a look at it and see what it looks like. Triac 5 volts ground, 0 NTC, 2 NTC, 1. And then there's the NTC connector. And so it looks like <clears throat> so this is where that NTC, that device was. Uh, is plugged in and it's jumped back to right here pin and pin so these are they're calling this pin two and this pin one and then each of these uh, goes out on the circuit board but we should be able by plugging this in uh, to be able to tell and then checking here we should be able to tell if we're getting um, Five volts or not? Right? Yeah. It sounds good to me. So I will. Again, I'm going to be careful here. We've this is all plastic up here. This box is plastic. So the underside of the circuit board is well. It's energized. It's not going to be touching anything but plastic. I say that so that I can plug this in. Oh, hey, just out of curiosity, <laughs> we see anything wrong with that? <laughs> Before I plug this in, <laughs> oh, how did I miss that? That's pretty beat up. And I don't know whether that's cause or effect at this point. Capacitor and it's toast. Quick, get a soldering iron and put it on those two and open it open. Get that out of there and see if we have a replacement. And we want lead in the solder, man. Come on. Okay. Yeah. So this this board has a covering on it to protect it, I think. There we go. There's one and this is good. Industrial sized uh, solder shocker there. And 
out of the way. This is how we like to have our components come out. So this capacitor is not any good anymore. I'm going to go dig through my pile of spare stuff. You don't want to watch me do that. Uh, I may come right back if I can find one. And if I can't, I'll be back after I find one. <laughs> we'll see you then. This is from the mailman today. Uh, and he brought us a 0.82 microfarad uh, film capacitor. This one was an A24K, so that was within 10%. This is within 5%, so it's a, it's a better capacitor. Not really called for, but these also are used in audio devices, so uh, I bought a couple extra. Are a little closer together than they need to be because the original was that far apart. So I'm going to straighten them out. Are not polarized. That looks pretty good. This goes in here. This goes in this. We'll just kind of look around at all that. That looks pretty good. There's a thermistor of some sort. Oops. Temperature sensor. And then there are a couple other things we had to do in here. Um, Remember when we, when we took off the nut back here looking for what was going on, we had, uh, there was some heat shrink around that, and so we want to put another piece of heat shrink around the nut. Protection, and then 
both of these things were wrapped together with a tie wrap go at the end got it and we should be ready to close doctor um, but before we do that uh, before we put the insulation in and put in the spacers and the nuts and the last few remaining things uh, we're going to repeat the experiment that we did early on in the project and we're going to see how much electricity this uses. If you remember when we plugged it in before, it used no watts. But now, when we plug it in, it uses no watts, but I have a flashing power light, so I didn't have that before. If I turn it on or select, now I can select four hours, which I did, and I'm going up, I'm using 250 watts. Uh, select six hours, 250 watts, again we're on high. Ten hours, still using 250 watts, select, I'm on warm, apparently it uses the same temperature no matter what you, no matter what you set it to. So the only difference would be how long it leaves that element for. So it's. A, that element's going to take 250 watts, and then that, I'm going to turn it off so it doesn't get too hot to handle. Um, so the element's going to use 250 watts no matter what. It's getting warm. Um, and then the, it's getting hot. The uh, thermal switch will turn it on and off depending on how the panel is set, that 250 watts. So. It'll never, it's not uh, you know, a high, medium, low kind of setting. It's really a duration setting. Uh, so while this is, well, it's pretty hot. Yeah, that's uh, smoking hot. We're going we're gonna to let this cool off for a little while and then we'll be back. All right, we'll see if we can put the rest of this back together now. Um, so there's a, there's a band on here. Uh, it's heated from here to here. The center section, you notice, isn't heated. But the rest of the pot gets real hot. And of course, the whole thing heats up. But most of the heat's going to be, it'll get a little bit hotter where this band is. And so when I took it apart, <clears throat> this spring and kind of the less hot part was behind the control panel, which makes sense, so it doesn't want to heat the control panel up. And this, uh, this mat, this fiberglass mat, actually came between the heater wires. And then there's some slits in the, in the mat that... Uh, But, I'm going to turn it over because we have some more work to do here. Um, <clears throat> you can't see them, but those posts have to go through these holes here, and these standoffs are, and the washer on each one uh, were present uh, when we took it apart, so we have to replace those. Um, and then... There's a washer and, and nuts and stuff that go on the other side. But so in order to set that whole thing up, I've got to put standoff, standoff, washer, standoff, washer. And then 
we'll attempt to line this up. And flat washer, flat washer. Flat washer, lock washer, nut. Lock washer, nut. Finally, um, got this. So the only thing that, and it's kind of the thing I'm not talking about because I don't know what I what I would do with it. But there's um, there is one last thing that we should be thinking about, and that is, did this defective device, this, did this. Was this the cause or the effect? So, is this the reason that this thing failed? Or is this a result of some condition that caused it to fail? Uh, I'm going to go with, that's the reason it failed right now, because that's all I have. But if it failed again, then I would look, uh, I would look further, and the good news is <laughs> I already have the part on hand. So, before we let this go back to the owner or out into the field, we will... Um, out to a new owner. We will test it through a cycle. We'll let it heat up. We'll let it heat up and cool down and make sure that the, the switching process works and it doesn't just make sure it doesn't just run away. So, um, and if it switches on and off and all that and I'll assume that it's going to run for four hours. I might even let it run for the shortest cycle, whatever that is. Uh, and just make sure that it, when it gets to the end, it, it turns its little self off. Because these are the kinds of things that we just uh, kind of set and forget. I don't know about you, but I haven't thought twice about plugging my uh, plugging my crockpot in and leaving the house. So um, we want to make sure that it's a safe device. But. So here it is. Put this back in it. And this is actually a pretty cool crock pot in that it has some latches that go into the body and make a, a seal to the top uh, so that the only vent is this little, little hole here. So that's pretty cool. So, <clears throat> That's it. I won't make you watch me <laughs> test it for four hours. I'd make a hell of a video, but I'm not doing it. And um, thanks for watching. See you next time.